you throw one more piece of shit on the fucking stage, I'm gonna come find your ass, I'm gonna beat your ass, wherever the fuck you are. Isn't that I mean, crazy? Oh, about, I, I haven't showered in three days. Absolutely, it's a fantastic year. I talk more than anybody does, because you don't know what my shit means. Here we have the beautiful driver's seat and steering wheel. That's where all the magic happens. I made that up, by the way. That was my phrase. I need a bed that can handle a lot of this, you know? Out of nowhere, an angry-looking hotel manager marched towards us. Thinking quickly, Steve immediately pretended to be blind. As we escaped, Steve regained his sight. It was a miracle. All my neighbors jog by, and they, just, they, and they stop, and they look, and I go, hello. <laughs> I got to be so mean with all the middle fingers. Well, you know what? We were built with middle fingers. I mean, you might as well throw them up every once in a while, Once in a while, you got to reel them up. Ooh, ooh, wow. ooh. I got my Xbox here, which I've never turned on. I suck at games. Okay, really? 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 Really, Dad? Do I gotta go buy my shirt? Really? Go get him a couple shirts that fit, please, somebody. So what I'm about to say to you right now means a lot to me because when this song was written, I had a pretty pissed off guitar player. And he probably wrote this song in 20 minutes just to piss me off even more. I'm going to read the Bible right now. <laughs> you need all, you need all, every ounce of that Bible. You I am, get, man. I'm Joe Olstein, okay? When I want to be. They tried it last year when it was called Summerland with Everclear. And, you know, art's just the biggest douche bag on the planet. The guy couldn't sing to save his life. And I'll say that right here to him. Now he can't stand the little fucker. And Steve shot fireworks out of their tour bus while he was driving down the highway. That's some AJ Foy shit right there, let me tell you. I know my shit. Mm -hmm. This is called the douchebag jar. If I say anything disrespectful, I have to put money in the jar. You know what? Light a grit. Fuck it. You gotta smoke have this. Grit. Just smoke one. Just do it. Just do it for the fans. Do it for the people. I quit smoking a year then ago. You quit. you quit till you're done with this, okay? Then you're gonna pow down two packs, okay? Just light one up. That's not true. That's inaccurate. That's inaccurate. The promoter had kindly provided us wayward minstrels with a sprawling backstage Thanksgiving buffet. Mid-song, Steve runs backstage and grabs trayfuls of the blessed bounty we were about to receive. A huge food fight between band and crowd ensues. Are you a pet lover? I'm a huge pet lover, and I rescued my dog named Scooby which I've had my phone on me. I'd show you a picture of him. He's my best friend in the world. And he's in a kennel right now because I'm traveling. But I hate putting him there because I bought him a new bed, tons of toys. And as soon as I got there, he's like, eh, later, Dad. I'm out of here. So he's like a puggle with a little boxer in him. But he's just my, I can't, I'll start crying right now if you don't, don't do this right now. <laughs> I will tell you right now, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you. Okay? You're a pussy fuck bitch. Okay? And I'm gonna show for thousands of people right now. Because I'm gonna walk off stage, and guess what? You're paying for it, motherfucker, okay? Here's a refrigerator with all the food that's been in here for like three months. I made a new friend. This guy is the craziest dude I've ever met in my life. <laughs> Uh, if I still did drugs and partied, I don't know what we'd be doing. Um, anyways, uh, we're gonna rock the house tonight, and uh, I'm not saying he does drugs and party, but he's got enough money to. So. Look at, look at, look at, look at. I got flowers on the piano. Oh man, that's my feminine side right there. Yo, this is Tony Fidoni, third best guitarist Tony to ever. Tony Fidoni. Third best guitarist to ever Up come in out your of. your mouth right now. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. Stop right there. Now, the next thing is this. You spill this damn drink. Oh, oh. Okay? Take it slow now. You spill this motherfucker, you get 50 more. <laughs> slow. Good. Yes. We played it without Paul because Paul, our bass player's Canadian family, was in town or somewhere 
I think it was his excuse to go get a Jack Daniels because he walked out with a Jack in his hand. This is Sean. Sean's the healthy guy on the bus. I'll show you his drawer. It's got powders and pills and weights and apples. And so you're saying I'm stuff. a pill popper now? You're a fresh pill popper. A fresh pill popper. There's salad in the fridge. He eats it by hand like a freaking rabbit. I don't know why. In mid-96, my bike went missing from our rat-infested downtown rehearsal complex. I didn't notice Steve and Kevin snickering as they consoled me. Two weeks later, I'm over at their apartment and there's my bike out on their balcony. They assured me they had no idea how it got there. I couldn't figure it out. They really did steal and sell my bike. I've been in a band with them for a year and a half. Only then did it dawn on me that Steve and Kevin truly were professional criminals. I've never heard Steve laugh harder before or since. Fun times! You got more people coming to that seat. What's with the? We're supposed to be social distancing. <laughs> Steve! No. And I actually want to make a gospel record of all things, too. Yeah. That's kind of, I know. I know I'm stretching it. But. <laughs> Whoa, now you slipping out. Now get off my stage. Just show up. And I'm going to put a margarita in your hand. I'm going to say, welcome aboard. No seat belts allowed. Put your seats back. And let's get drunk. Actually, you can tell they're all slobs. I will open it up and show you why. If you live like that, that's not how I would live. If you look at my bunk down here, we call these the pop star bunks. Cars are a little bigger. Mine actually doesn't look that great either today. So we're going to go ahead and move on back here. I'm going to piss my pants right now. I'm going to piss my pants. <laughs> and I've got no panties on. I'm going to piss my pants. Are you kidding me? We get to do this for a living. We get to go out and sit around all I've been on my computer all day looking at furniture what the fuck I mean I'm trying to furnish a new house and you know and the, the, you know and dealing with ex-girlfriends that hate me so <laughs> it, that's it can't get any better than that you know and I'm trying to find some pussy tonight I don't even know what's gonna happen <laughs> once in a great while some of the guys come to me and say hey I got a special friend I just met she's drunk I let them go back to the back lounge and we won't talk about that. Tell I tell the fans tell tell the fans about the day we were going to the studio and I got car sick. <laughs> That's like every time you come to Detroit, you get car sick. <laughs> Dude, you roll the windows up and you smoke three packs in a half hour, and I'm puking out the window and it's blowing back in the back seat. Hitting you Josh were puking at the window. You and were he's puking throwing out up. The you, you puked at the window, not out the window. <laughs> I okay. puked in my shirt, remember? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, then we got an ambulance. Then we got an ambulance at the studio. <laughs> you're like, you're pacing in circles going, right there. That's what you were doing. I, Rubbing your forehead sweat. You're going, I thought oh. we were losing you. I thought we were losing you. I really did. I was like, oh my God. Steve just came to Detroit, stayed at the house all week. We didn't do nothing but bad shit. And he got, got a stranger. That's where all the magic happens. Now we just do prayer back there. Read the book, Book of God. Sean reads the Quran. I, I try. But I always interrupt. Here's my pantry. Nothing in it. I don't shop. You're supposed to be social distancing. Dude, you are, no, uh -uh. I rub faces and kiss kids. I don't care. You're supposed to be social distancing. I told you about I'm it. I'm by myself in my house talking to you. You've got your kids yeah. right across from you, your brother. Until you shut Instagram off. <laughs> Just light Until one. Because I love Instagram off. Just like, oh, light I'm one. Going. So the drummer of their band would constantly wear cowboy boots, but when he would drum, he would take them off and play barefoot, and then he'd put them back on after the show. At some point during any given show, Mitch's boots would meet one of two fates. One, Steve would donate them to some lucky concert goer by flinging them into the pit. Cool. Or two, when Mitch wasn't looking, Steve would swiftly swipe the snakeskin footwear and sneak them backstage to make boot salad. About three times a week, you'd hear Mitchie talking to our manager saying, yep, Steve did it again. Just found him on the yeah, street. Paul! This is Paul! <laughs> Bass player! I don't know what he's doing. You know what? I still have I still have the toothbrush. We we had a toothbrush came out where you pushed it to turn it on. They played the All-Star. Yeah, that's it! That's <laughs> so, happened to open one of the packs and tried to bite into some 1978 bubblegum and it didn't really taste too well, so. 
I just slept in three days, and uh, I'm single, and I need some loving, so. If there's any chicks that want to come to a 5752 later, Sean and I will be there. Hanging out. Because his wife's not here yet. But, uh, Greg and I started out as brothers. We formed this band together. You know, there's a bond that'll, you know, I would take a bullet for that guy tomorrow. You know, I would jump in front of a truck for a second and then I'd push him in front of it. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. But, uh, I'll be at an airport, dude. I walk in an airport and they're like, I'm a cracker. And I go, no. I go, that's my buddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm Shrek. That's what I say. Push record. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Quit doing drugs and smoking so much weed. That's why you're doing all these mashups. I'm fucking with you right now. I'll let you be on my album, bro. Oh man, it's gonna be, what's gonna be called? The Mob? Uh, no, it's gonna be called Tony Fidoni and the Clan Tony Magnets. Tony Fidoni and the Mob. Get a real quiet. I really like it. I love it. I love it quiet. My girlfriend likes to turn the music up in the car and I'm like, turn that shit off. I do it for a living. I don't want to listen to this shit. Who gives a fuck about the red line? I don't care. Sorry, I didn't say that. Who gives a frick? I take that back. Okay? I take that back. Don't cancel my check. I take that back. For all the fans that came out to see the show, thank you so much. Now for you little pussy bitches out there that are going to cheer me, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> were in the business of separating unsuspecting citizens from their belongings and selling them at a 100% profit margin. Super successful criminals. And yes, they really did steal my bike and sell it. This is 300 pages later, he's still not over it. I'm just saying, I feel like he deserves an apology. I'm using this comment from my last Smash Mouth video because it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Like that's, that's the beauty of Smash Mouth is that they've always been the worst. Oh wait. We're doing the last line of All Star here. Yeah, sure. I'll let you watch. Mmm. Don't you tell me my boy Steve Harwell didn't say that. Um. Yeah. No. Smash Mouth is is has always been a huge problem. Let's separate the art from the artist. Astro Lounge is one of the best records. Also, please note that he he just walked off stage. Uh, the band is finishing out the song, but he is out of there. He is. Out!